heard it already. Just so you know. Sorry. Yeah, there's more people back there. Back there talking. One of them is supposed to be doing the announcements. Our vision to develop a congregation of Christ-like people who are committed to bringing others to Jesus, helping to heal the hurting, and helping to change the community and the world by demonstrating the love of Christ to everyone. Amen? Hey, there she is. Sorry, you guys, I got carried away. Hi, you guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Okay. Our schedules for the week is, um, of course, you guys know Sunday morning. Sunday school is at 9 o'clock. We had a great study this morning. For those of you that weren't here, you missed out. Amen. We're talking about Abraham and, and um, uh, sometimes we make bad choices, you know. And... Uh, it was life applicable. And you guys, uh, if you're interested in that kind of study, uh, 9 o'clock Sunday mornings. Um, Sunday service, of course, is at 1030. Um, the Spanish service is at 2 o'clock, and we have an evening service at 6 o'clock. Tuesday night, we have a Bible study here. We're going through the book of Titus. It's been fantastic. We're actually going through it because uh, Jordan is probably going to be leaving for the service, and we wanted to... Uh, speak about uh, a godly character amen and uh, especially in such a place as the service <laughs> so uh, keep Jordan in prayer about the choices that he's making um, come on Tuesday night and um, enjoy the Bible study in Titus and uh, also um, it's a prayer meeting so it's a time when we pray together as a family amen um, Thursday night the women are doing a Bible study at 10 o'clock Thursday morning the women are doing a Bible study at 10 o'clock. I heard it was fantastic last week from a couple different people. And um, they're going through a study of the women of the Bible. If you're interested in that, it's Thursday mornings. Oh, given by our own Miss Daisy. Miss Shirley, too. Uh, we have a study at uh, Cody um, Cody's house right here on, what's the street right here? Cyprus. Just down towards the end by the high school. Um on Thursday nights, it's been really good. Brother Paul's been doing that study, and it's been really, really good. Um, I think we just switched books, didn't we? What's our, what are we on now? No, no, no. It's Thursday night. We were in John, or First John. Yeah. Okay. The Women's Conference. Mom, do you want to come up and talk about the Women's Conference and the other thing for a minute? Come on up here. Matter of fact, finish... Uh, Blah, blah, whatever's on here, okay? This page right here. Finish this page right here. Here's some glasses. Okay, the Women's Conference has been changed from June 8th to June 22nd so that we don't interfere with uh, the morning church here on t uh, Saturday. And... Um, uh, they're still having a yard sale Memorial Weekend, and uh, we should, could certainly use some items because uh, it takes a lot of money to put on the conference. Last year it took almost 2600 so um, we really need to pull money together for that. And, um, and then the yard sale, just gently use things, and we appreciate that very much. But I did want to notify everybody that the conference date had changed. Uh, and then there's a summer camp coming up, the 24th and the 28th. And if you're interested, please see George or Jorge and uh, see him right away because that's so close. And uh, that costs a lot of money, too. We need to know what children want to go and pull that all together. So thank you very much. God bless everyone. I got Psalms 32. Thank you, those Psalms 32.
Got it, Brother Mark? Note 32. <laughs> Psalm 61. Amen. <laughs> the number one is say, Blessed. The blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. Amen. Whose sins are covered, blessed is the man. <clears throat> Amen. Who sings, let me say, um, I'm lost over here. Then. No, I'm good. 32, 32. Amen. Who sins the Lord does not count against him. And his was and he whose spirit is not deceived. Amen. He said, When I keep silent, my bones wasted away to my groaning all day long. For day and night, and your hand is heavy upon me. So my strength was set in the heat of summer. Number five. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, then acknowledge my sins to you, and then not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgive the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly Pray to you, while you may be found, surely, when the mighty water rise, then they will not reach him. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs and deliverance. Amen. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you shall go. I will counsel, I counsel you and watch over you. Do not be like a horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by death and breath, or they will not come to you. Many are the hosts of the wicked, but the Lord unfailing love surrounding the man who trusts him. And number 11, they say, Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord, and be glad, ye righteous. Sing, O you who are upright in your heart. Thank you, Jesus. That's amazing. Father God, just being, you know, with this sound, uh, reaching a whole week, Lord. Thank you, Father God. And I just, just be glad being here, Father God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the, um, for my brothers and sisters. We just made it to the church, Father God. Thank you, Lord. I just, uh, I just pray for all the blessings, Father God, and the many people coming on in. We can say hello, hola. Hi, everyone. <laughs>
a rejoicing. Thank you for the rejoicing spirit. That's that's the the spirit of the community Christian church congregation. They rejoice in the Lord and just like Brother Harry just read a ver you know verse eleven of Psalm thirty two. Rejoice, be glad in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always, and I say rejoice. And my medit uh, my exaltation is rejoice. That's who we are in Christ. If we are in Christ, we are joyful. Amen, Amen to that. Yes, Amen. thank you. And um, yeah, Lord, it's a really a great Sunday to be together in the house of worship. We love to see Miss Tina, Miss Rose be back here. We thank you for them. And uh, <laughs> how nice to be to be seeing our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And we're always praying for you. That's the kind of church that we have here. We're rejoicing. We're prayerful, and we're a loving church because of Christ. Amen. So let's open our Bible in First Samuel, um, chapter two. Rejoice in the Lord. Glory to God. Father, thank you for. Of the Holy Spirit filling us this place, flooding in this place, flooding in our hearts, and as our minds are ready, Lord, to be renewed today, as our hearts are ready to accept and receive the word, the living word and the living water, the bread of life. And I thank you, Lord, that every ears are going to be uh, attuned, Lord, to you, to hear your word today and all um, the entire service and all the meditations and the sermons, we thank you that we are going to be refreshed today. When we thank you for the Holy Spirit's presence, giving us the joy. And thank you, Lord, again, that um, every everyone right now, Lord, is fixing their eyes on you. Because, Lord, we know that our Redeemer lives. And we know that you're going to feed us today by your word. I praise you for it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So first, Samuel. Um, uh, two verses one to two, but the, I'll give you a little background in this. Uh, first chapter of First Samuel, we were talking here about uh, Hannah. Who remembers Hannah? Her own, the mother of Samuel, the mother of Samuel. And at the time, she was barren, and she was persecuted with the other wives of Elkanah. Elkanah was the priest in the house of the Lord, and at the time, she was. You know, she was barren, and, and Penina, the other wife of Elkanah, had children. So she's been, she's been praying. Her faith to the Lord was so strong, and she keeps praying and praying and praying to the Lord. And, and you know, in this uh, verses that we're going to have this morning, it turns out that, that had Hannah here articulated her belief, her faith, and her rejoicing in the Lord because the Lord gave her the son and that is same well nothing is impossible to the lord the same thing that happened also to sarah and um, in this he she has able to to speak greatly of and boldly of it, of her um, rejoicing to the lord and, and it's not only for her own rejoicing but she knows that the messiah will come and that's the same thing here. We know that the Messiah had come and he will come again. And we are so thankful for it. So that's that's the um, <clears throat> gist of the first chapter, First Samuel. And then uh, chapter 2, verse 1 says, And Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord. For there is none besides you, nor there is any rock like our God. Amen. Now, there's no other rock. There's no other God. Apart from Jesus, there is no God. Apart from him, there's no Savior. That's why when we come here every Sunday, is that, well, Lord, we know about you, but we want to go deeper about you. We don't want to just only know you and that head knowledge, but we know you deeper in our heart and our relationship is being built through our time with you, spending time with you, and growing in you, and sharing in you. That's how we are, because God loves to see each of us growing in faith, maturing in faith, keeps obeying, being humble in heart, and being having the love of God in each of us. And today, as we sing this uh, for our praise and worship, it's just like Hannah. Hannah rejoices in the Lord, of what he had done, 
but because of before even even at the time happened that nothing happened in her life because of her barren years she was not able to go but yet she is able to have that faith in the lord and the same thing with us have the faith like hannah have that kind of boldness like hannah have that kind of rejoicing like hannah who, who gave the son uh samuel became the prophet and also he was a counsel to the kings even to the king david and that's how church nothing is impossible to god because our, the hands of our god are not short the hands of our god are always lifting us up that's the kind of god that we serve and we honor and we exalt in this place yes honor and glory to jesus christ forever and ever and everybody says amen, amen. glory thank you lord Church, are you ready to worship the Lord? Remember, we are here to worship, to give worship and honor to our God. Are you ready to sing to the Lord? Amen. Yes, Amen. I am. How about you? Amen. How about you? Okay, let's let's uh, stand on our feet and let us worship the Lord from our heart. This delights Him. This delights the Lord when we worship the, Him from the bottom of our heart with all gladness and rejoicing yes lord jesus we are gathered in this pray in this place lord to worship you we gather in this place lord to honor the light of the world we are we gather in this place to give glory to the king of all hallelujah the glorious king church let it be that our hearts adore him let our hearts sing to him to our king lord jesus christ our god and our Redeemer. Amen? Amen. Yes, we are here to worship. We sing this together.
massive cross and you're on the cross and I are you asking yourself sometimes who am I Lord that you died for me that you loved me that you endured you, you take the curse for me for my sake in order for me to be redeemed wash my sins clean white as snow and be ready to be called the sons and daughters of the mind oh, the highest Lord glory who am I Lord yes and one thing about the church he looks at you with love he looks at you with love he loves you dearly and with this we'll keep saying this and Lord who am I who am I Lord thank you But the Lord of all the earth Or care to know my name Or care to feel my hurt Who am I that the bright and morning star Or choose to light the way For my ever wandering Because of who I am, not because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean. A vapor in the wind, still you hear me when I'm calling. Lord, you catch me when I'm falling. You told me who I am. I am yours. I am yours. That the eyes that see my sin would look on me with love and watch me rise again. Who am I that the voice that calmed the sea would call out through the rain and calm the storm in? because of who I am, but because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. I am a flower quickly fading, here today and gone tomorrow, a wave tossed in the ocean, a vapor in Still you hear me when I'm falling Or you catch me when I'm falling You told me who I am about our God he's so amazing and his grace is always amazing how wonderful it is to reflect on the on the lyrics of this song looking at our lives we were so wretched and now we are redeemed the blood of Jesus and the finished work on the cross give us the victory in Christ Jesus and we are standing here right now together 
as a church, as his body redeemed by the blood and saying, thank you, Lord, for that amazing grace. My chains are gone. We are glad, church. We are blessed to be called the sons and daughters of God with chains already broken because of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Let's sing this song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.
I'm going to be in Romans 2. It says, You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself. Because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So, when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them, yet do the same things, do you think that you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches, the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you towards repent, repentance? But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will give each person according to what he has done. Pretty self-explanatory, except there's one thing, one key verse that I highlighted darker than all the rest. Verse 4 says, Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, realizing God's kindness leads you towards repentance? It's already been fulfilled with Jesus Christ. We were once that stubbornness. We had it all when we were in the world, in our flesh. But because of the spirit that we dwell in, that gives fully into our spirit we're whole we don't have to have that stubbornness anymore and we can come holy to god and we can see that path towards repentance for our wrongdoing we each fall short but we're in a great relationship where our hearts all in our spirits all in and we don't have to worry about that iniquity anymore. We just have to give fully and see our transgressions and ask God, Father, help me. So, with that, Father, help me. I fall short. I don't think there's a person in the flesh who can fully compare because the only one who did was Jesus. Yep. We draw in his spirit so we can reach that. So, let's reach that together with him. So, with that, may the men come forward. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the great relationship we have with you, Father. Father, just may our hearts feel fully unburdened, Father, as we take on your peace. May nothing in this world tear us apart from you, Father. And just may we stay in you, Father, and see your great glory for what it is. Just let our hearts be prepared for you, Father. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen.
says, He took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, saying to them, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He then took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Dear Heavenly Father, once again we come before you today, our hearts fully prepared, Father. Father, just strengthen us for the times that are to come, and just strengthen us that we might fully see you, Father, and commune with you. Just let us all be open to this great relationship, Father, and help those who don't know you yet. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm in uh, Psalm 55, uh, verses 16 and 18. As for me, I call to the Lord, and the Lord saves me. E evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. Um, well, this, it, what that means is that even though we're in trouble and all those who are against us are trying to bring us down and further away from God, all, all we have to do is call upon him and to help us. God have you say. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for the day. Thank you for all you've done for us and thank you for helping us and keeping us safe from all those who wish to harm us. Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for Here we go. <laughs> 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 
that right finally let's get things moving here okay so let's pray for Francis so um, I'm gonna ask Paul Paul could you lay hand on this and let's, let's pray for this let's all be in agreement for this okay, okay. go ahead brother father we just mm -hmm. we just lift up Francisco to you Lord and just mm -hmm. pray for his healing Lord pray that your hands over him Lord, yeah and, um, com comfort all the family Lord. yeah just, Lord. Um, just um Lord, let your hand be seen through all of this. Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we also want to lift up. There's so many people, Lord. Francis mm -hmm. and Janet and, and um, Antoine, Lord, and um, Sandy, Lord. And mm -hmm. Thankful that uh, Rose is back and Tina's mm -hmm. here. And, and lift up Andy, Lord, yes. as well, Lord. There's yes, just so Lord. many, Lord. And I'm sure each one of us have a lot of people on our heart, Lord. And mm -hmm. we just lift them up to you, yes, Lord. Lord. But, for prayer, Lord, and yeah. um, for healing, Lord. Yes, we Lord. Just lay them before your throne, Lord, that you would Thank heal you, them, Lord, and make them whole, Lord. Yes, Lord. But the biggest thing, Lord, that your hand would always be seen through it, Lord. Yes. That people would see you through it all, mm -hmm. Lord. We just thank you, Father, and praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Paul. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God always answered prayer, Amen. and he worked it out. What happened to us today? Uh, God always had a reason and a purpose for things to happen. If you have your Bible, let's turn to the book of Hebrew. Um, I'm going to read this morning from Hebrew chapter number 10. The book of Hebrew. I love Hebrew because Hebrew is deep subject. There's very deep stuff in the, in the book of Hebrew. And uh, uh, chapter 10 in the book of Hebrew. And we'll be reading from, let's read from verse 35. 35. Hebrew. Chapter 10, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For if you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now I want to point out here, don't cast away your confidence in the word of God. Don't cast away the word of God. Don't cast away that which God has given us. God has given us exceeding great and precious promise, great promises. And what he's meaning, don't give up on it. Don't be lighthearted about it. Don't give up on and, and not trust God completely. In these last days that we're living, there's a tremendous attempt made against us to try to weaken our faith. There's a lot of work of Satan operating in many ways to try to trip us up. And so he said, don't cast away, don't give up your confidence. Don't give up that which God has already promised you. He that persevered to the end shall be saved. We have to persevere. We have to hold in that which God has given us. It's easy in this society 
to, to, to slide and slip and, and to compromise with the world. It's so easy because the world has a powerful influence on us. If we are not embedded and grounded in the Word of God, we will be swept away with the things of the world. We'll be caught up with the things of the world because the world has a powerful effect. They, they, they tried to brainwash us through many means. And we have to be careful what we listen to. We have to be careful what we take heed to. The only thing you should hold on to is the Word of God. It's having the confidence in God's Word. Don't cast away that confidence because this is going to take us through the very end. This is going to bring us out into the promised land. Nothing else but the Word of God and the obedience to the Lord. And he said, after you've been patient, after you've done the will of God, after you, in a little while, he said, okay, after you have need of patience, after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. You might receive the promise. Doing the will of God it should be our primary focus in life is to serve God, live for Him, and be obedient. If God is showing you things to do, we need to be obedient. We want to surrender ourselves to, our, to, to Jesus and obey Him. It is easy for us to sidestep what God is calling us. And that's what Satan is going to try to sidestep us so that we don't fulfill God's calling. This is why we constantly, our walk with God is a constant evaluation. They said, examine yourself. You remember that scripture? It said, look at yourself. Don't worry about someone else in the church. Look at your own life and examine where you are with the Lord. It's very important. That if, you, if we're sensitive with the Holy Spirit, we're going to hear when God rebukes us. He's going to correct us. God will correct us when we go off. If we listen to him, we'd be quick to repent, right? That's the important thing. Like I say, sometime in our walk, we might take a misstep. Whoops, the Holy Spirit will convict us. You know, oh Lord, we're kind of getting off of it, but we need to get back and obey God. Persevere in the things of God. Be faithful to the Lord when he deals with you. Be faithful when he shows you things that you need to change your ways on. You know what? It takes time for us to learn about the ways of God. You know, just it's taking us years to learn about the ways of the world. It takes time for us to learn about the things of God. And the more we apply in the Word of God, the faster we can grow in the things of God. And it's very important to do that. Because if we are going to persevere and not give up, we have to know what God says about things. And uh, <clears throat> and then as we read, um, where it says, And just a little while, and he will come. And you will not wait anymore. There's going to be a time where it's going to be all over. There's going to be a time where it'll be all over. And you're going to be standing and say, I've done all that I could to stand. And you're going to hear the Lord say, Welcome, those good and faithful servants. I love to hear that. Would you? Would you like to hear that in the end? Those good, come enter into the joy of the Lord, those good and faithful servants. Is that a good thing to hear? So let's think about that and continue to be faithful every day of our life. Amen? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Right now, I'd like you to all to stand, pray one for another, maybe group the twos and threes, and uh, wherever your needs are, just concern.
Am I on, Mark? I am? Okay. I didn't even know there was a green light before. That's good. Alex showed me today. Everybody's hearing that on the TV. You gotta be careful what you say when the thing's on. You gotta be careful what you say no matter what. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Only what's in your heart. And it better be right. Amen. She laughed funny. Did you catch that? Anyways, I um, this morning I was kind of excited when I was hearing the meditations because um, every one of them uh, spoke to my heart. From Sunday school all the way through the day, it seemed like God was leading us in one direction. Amen. And the direction is that we trust Him. The direction is that no matter what the world is doing around us, no matter what um, thing happens in life, that uh, in Sunday school we were talking about things that happen in life. And um, there's such things that uh, cause us to do worldly things because we don't trust God with the things that are happening. Sometimes bad things can happen and, and we see a worldly way out. And it's the first thing we do is that worldly thing. But that worldly thing not only brings death to us, but it brings death to people in our lives because we're displaying the world to them instead of life to them, which is what Christ died to set us free from those things that we might have life and we might share that life. Amen. And every one of the meditations today uh, said the same thing, that we need to trust God, that we need to fully trust God. Amen. Um, and so I'm going to bring some scripture to you this morning that... Um, you may not have ever seen it this way before, but I really believe in my heart that, um, gosh, you know what, you guys, I feel so, um, uh, I really believe in my heart that, um, that God wants to use this scripture to, to deliver us and that, um, that he is the great deliverer. And, um, and I think he wants to show us, uh, who he is and what he did and who we are now because of what he did, who we're supposed to be. You know, we sang a song this morning to open the service and it's called uh, that we've been redeemed, right? What does redeemed mean? Huh? To be purchased, to be, actually, it means to be bought back. It, it already belonged to somebody. It was taken away and they, and they purchased it back. Amen. So we were already God's created, God's creation made in his image, the very image of God, the very image of purity, the very image of righteousness, the very image of being, um, uh, a, you want me just to say it? 
Amen. The very image of being a king of kings and a lord of lords. Amen. We were created in that image. Okay. And the, and the enemy, the, the devil, this is his playground, the Bible says, that he's the prince of this world. The enemy and the world that he created for us to live in. Not the world God created for us. Amen. But the, the world the enemy has created. Um, is the very opposite of what God has created for us to be. And, 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 and in that, we were stolen from Him. We were taken from Him. And we were taken into a place of darkness that the enemy created for us to live. And every one of us know what I'm talking about because every one of us lived in that darkness before we knew Jesus Christ. Amen? Didn't when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, didn't a great light appear? Didn't the truth appear? Huh? A great truth appeared, didn't it? And, and everything started to make sense. Everything that we had heard about, everything that people had tried to tell us, all of a sudden made sense, and we came into the light. Amen? I remember this. This is terrible. It's worldly. I'm just going to tell you in advance, okay? But I remember a show called Pol Poltergust. Was it Poltergust in the 80s? Poltergust in the 80s? And, and they kept telling the little girl, go to the light. <laughs> go to the light. And by doing so, she came back into the house and was saved, right, or something like that? Anyways, go to the light, people. Amen? No, I'm just teasing. But it's the truth, though. A great light came on, and we saw the truth, right? And, and you know what's sad is that we still live in a world of darkness. The world is dark all around us. Every, everything that, um, it's like in Sunday school, we were talking about Abraham going into Egypt, right? So he, he waits until he gets to the border of Egypt, and a great fear comes over him. A great fear comes over him because he's looking at his wife and he sees how beautiful she is. And she says, you know, he says to her, if we enter Egypt, people are going to see how beautiful you are and they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me, right? And they're going to take you. They're going to let you live. Why? Because of her great beauty, right? So he tells his wife, you need to lie and tell them you're my sister. Then I'll have favor with them because of who you are. Right? And isn't it funny? We're a lot like that in the world, aren't we? Something comes against us, and this happened because of a great famine came into the land. Right? And so he looked up instead of looking to Christ, instead of looking to God, he looked up and he saw Egypt. Right? And, he, and the Nile River fed everything, and it was all green and beautiful and a place that he could go and, and know that he could be saved. Know that he could have food for his family. Amen. Right. So he looks up and he sees this beautiful place. We look up and we see things in the world. We see a way out. Something happens and we look up and we see a way out. You know what I mean? And he sees this beautiful place. And so he decides he's going to go there. Well, on the way there, he sees how beautiful his wife is and he starts to fear. But the whole time God promised him, God promised him that the whole nation of Israel was going to come from his seed, that him and Sarah were going to have a baby, amen? So he didn't have to go to Egypt in fear. He could have went to Egypt and changed Egypt because of who God is in his life. But instead, he looked to the world. He looked to the world, and he gave his wife to another man. And he brought that other man sickness and death. The Bible says that Pharaoh called him in when he found out the truth, and he said, what have you done to me? Because God put a plague upon Pharaoh and his people, a disease, and made him sick. Because he laid with Abraham's wife. He said, what have you done to me? And when we live our lives in the world like the rest of the world in sin, and we live our lives in the world in darkness, and we make choices and decisions through that world, then we bring death to the people around us when God created us in His image to bring life. Just like we were brought life because somebody chose to live in Christ in our presence. Amen? Isn't that a beautiful thing? So this story is like off the wall today. I mean, you know, I'm going to bring you into hopefully understanding it. I'm going to try to do something a little different and read it all the way through it and then go back and break it down for you, okay? I'm going to try, Granny. She's making fun of me back there. Like, yeah, right. That's not going to happen. We're talking about a man who was demon-possessed with, with what they say was a legion. 
I looked up a legion because, you know, I really didn't know. I mean, I had this understanding of I thought 10,000 men or this or that. A Roman legion in the army was 6,000 men. And this man said, that when Jesus asked him who he was, he said, I am legion because I am many. I don't know how many demons he had, but he had a lot of things in the world inside of him. A lot of worldly things inside of him. I'm going to tell you guys, Jesus should be the center of our life, but there's still a lot of worldly things in us. And we need to be delivered just like this man was delivered. Amen? Amen? We've been redeemed. We've been purchased back. Amen? And in that purchase, we've been given life. Not just life eternal, but life here as it's, it's going to be in heaven. Amen? Amen? And we want, he wants to, re, he purchased us by his blood to redeem us back to the original plan. Amen? Do you think that plan starts when we die and go to heaven? No, that plan started the day you understood and that light came on and you received Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So, in saying all that, I haven't prayed. So let's pray. Father, we just want to come to you, Lord, and just thank you, Father, for just what an amazing God you are, Lord. I, you know what I love about this church, Lord, is that I've already been fed this morning. I'm the pastor... And I'm being fed, Lord. I want to thank you for Alex and Daisy and these young men, Father, that just deliver your word, Father, in a righteousness that they can only receive from you. They speak in your truth, Lord. And, and I can only hope with a godly hope that they're, they, they choose to live the things they're learning. They choose to live, Father, the wisdom that's coming from your word, Lord, that they're able to share, Father, with us. And we ask, Lord, that you would just open each heart this morning that, uh, Lord, we would, we would be uh, ready and, and willing, Lord, to hear your word and receive it, Father. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Understand that God's word is living and active. Amen. It's funny because I know that it's alive, right? But it really only becomes active when we put it into practice. Amen. Amen. I know it's alive because no matter who speaks it, no matter who reads it, every heart is touched by it. Okay, Every one of us have a great conviction that comes over us, even if it's a simple word, a simple verse. And the, and the conviction isn't a bad thing, it's a great thing. Because it's exactly what, if we give in to that conviction, we choose to walk with Christ, then it'll draw us to Him, amen? It reveals our truth so that we can receive His truth. You see the beauty of God's word? And so don't, 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 just understand something. It only becomes active when you allow that conviction in your heart to receive it. Amen? And act upon it. It's always alive because it's going to always share with us. But it's only active when we choose it. Amen? So I say that because, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I have here in the church and in every church I've ever been in in 20 something years of ministry, the only, the thing that bothers me the most is that I have, uh, people have always, and I, I myself have, have done this, people have always come to me and said, what a great message it is, and I learned this from it, I learned that from it. And not five minutes later in the parking lot, they're doing the opposite thing. It only becomes really real when you put it into action, amen? And, and, and that action is what God is doing through the redemptive blood of Christ. You get it? And so understand this when we read this scripture, okay? We are in Mark chapter 5. I'm hoping to share this with you in a way you've never heard it, but it's always, but it's completely in God's truth. Amen? Okay, Granny, I'm going to try my hardest to read it all the way through. Chapter 5, 1. You guys there? Mark 5, 1. It says, when, when uh, this was right after, remember, Jesus had calmed the storm when he was going through the, river, uh, through the uh, Sea of Galilee. And he had just calmed the storm. He reaches the other side, and here's what it says. They went across uh, the lake to the region of where? Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. This area, just so I can give you a little history on it, was, was uh, mostly um, uh, Gentile. And we know that because of the pigs, because it's unlawful for Jewish people to partake of the pigs or to even have them in their presence or anything, okay? 
So it was mostly a Gentile area, which was it's really beautiful if you think about it, okay? Because in, in all the areas around Jerusalem, Jesus told people not to tell anybody about his miracles. But here he tells the man to go tell everyone because there was no hindrance there. Amen? Do you know that in, in the world we live in, there should be no hindrance there? Nobody can harm you, Granny. There's, there's laws against it. You can be who you want to be, amen? Right? But in, in Jerusalem and those surrounding areas, people try to kill Jesus. But here he could just, two things, Alex, stood out to me, really powerful. He could just tell him, go and tell everyone, amen? Isn't that beautiful? But he could all, But he also, not only could he say, go and tell everyone, right? But he, but he also, um, not only could he tell him to go and tell everyone, but he also um, was able to um, just let go and share everything with them knowing. Knowing, see? He, he went there knowing that they weren't Jewish. He went there knowing that, that he came not just for the Jews, but for all men. Amen? And he could go there freely and, sh and, and do something wonderful with them. And and know and know that even when he left, that that man was going to carry on his work. Isn't that crazy? And it's everything we've been talking about. Watch what it says. It says uh, so they crossed over. Okay, when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs and met with him, and met him. This man lived in in the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with chain, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one, no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he, he would cry out and cut himself with the stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Swear by swear to me, swear to God that you won't uh, torture me, for Jesus had said to him, Come out of him, come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he began or he begged Jesus again and again not to send him into the out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this to the town and countryside, and the, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man. Listen to this beautiful thing. This is such a beautiful thing. We should be experiencing this every day. When, when, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the, by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed in, in Luke, it says he ran around naked. He didn't wear clothes. Dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it could, uh, had, those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon possessed man and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus, leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed uh, begged to go with him and Jesus Jesus did not let him but said go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he ha and how he had mercy on you so the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him and all the people were amazed amen isn't that a crazy story isn't it so back up I almost got there, Granny. I only stopped a couple times. I did good. Amen. Okay. 
When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs and met him. Amen? Do you guys know that the tombs were caves? They were caves, and, and, they, and the people would find these caves. And if you go there today, those caves are still there. Okay? And, and they would bury people in, the, in these caves. And they called them the tombs. And so when I think about our lives before Christ, huh? we were living in the tombs too. We were living in death. And we were, and we were literally being possessed by the world around us and everything in it. Huh? This, this is a great example of something wonderful if we really look at it, okay, from what God delivered us from. Isn't it beautiful? Right? Watch what it says. I was so thrilled when God gave me this, um, uh, this understanding of this scripture. Right? Because sometimes we can just read through it and say, oh, God delivered this man who was demon-possessed and blah, blah, blah. We don't really get the full picture. And we think, oh, he was possessed by demons, you know. But I'm going to tell you guys something. We all were until we were delivered. And even now, as children of God, having Jesus Christ in our heart, Alex was saying it this morning, we're not perfect, we fall. Amen? But we're meant to get up. Okay? And the reason why we still fall is because even though we can't be possessed anymore, because only one master can live in this house, amen, it doesn't mean we're not being tormented all around us. There's a spiritual realm. There's a spiritual realm that the enemy has created to be in the lives of people who don't know Christ and to be all around the lives of people who do. Everywhere we read in the Bible that this realm is in the church. It's even within the church. Okay? And Jesus died, right, Granny? To deliver us from that, that we might have a new life in Him. Amen? We've been purchased back. So in saying that, go to Genesis 1.26. Keep your finger in, in Mark. Joan, you didn't keep your finger there. She's all, oops. 126, Harry. As, well, that's kind of crazy considering it's the first one. Pastor Memo. <laughs> He's using my words. I used to do that to him when he was a baby Christian. In fact, you hold her New Testament. Amen. I can't think of Memo as a baby Christian. Isn't that funny? Look at Memo and I go, man, he surpassed me a long time ago. I want to catch up. Amen. You guys there? Everybody there? Watch what it says. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. I want to share something with you before I read the rest of that. And this is funny because God gave it to me. I already knew it, but, but I didn't want to know it. I didn't want it to be real, Alex. Okay? But God can't tell you and I what to do. He can't make us do something. Did you know that? He told the demon, You get out of that man. That demon left. And they, and they were in fear. And Luke, it says, that they were in fear that he was going to cast them into the abyss. Eternal damnation. Another time he said to the, de the demon, said to him, have you come before the appointed time? <coughs> you see, he commands the wind. Remember? He commands the storms. He commands disease. He commands the world that he created. Amen? But he doesn't command man. He gave man free will. Man has to choose. But He created us in His image originally to be like Him, to be with Him, to have a relationship with Him. And the enemy stole that. The enemy took that away. And so He had to send His own Son to die for our sins. In Sunday school, we learned that He didn't take on just my sin or your sin or just the sin of those who are going to be saved, but He took all man's sin past, present, and future, from Adam and Eve to the last man on earth, and He took it upon the cross. And you know what kills me about that? Is that you and I, we have sin in our life, and it hurts. And it hurts to overcome it. It hurts to give it up, doesn't it? But here is a man who didn't commit any sin ever, never took place. Right? And he didn't just take on one man's sin, he took on the world's sin. Every single person. And I'm going to tell you something. It affected him. He felt it. 
You and I, we have a hard time filling our own sin. Can you imagine filling billions and billions and billions of people's sin? All cast upon you at one time upon the cross for something you didn't do? That's what our Savior did for us. That's what He took from us. And that's what He buried for us. He buried it in death so you and I would never have to die. Amen? I'm sorry, I don't usually get this excited, but I'm telling you, God showed me something here, how powerful He is. And what He did and who He created, He created he created His own image. He created us to be like Christ. He created us to have a relationship with Him that's so pure and righteous and upright. Amen? <clears throat> and that was taken, and when it was taken, He sent His only begotten. He sent the one that was in His image. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the very image of God. Amen? He never sinned, but He took our sin. And He buried it in death so we would never experience death. That's the God we serve. That's the one who redeemed us. Amen? And He had to do it because we were making the wrong choices and we couldn't help ourselves. Amen? But guess what? In Christ, we can be delivered. Isn't it beautiful? That's what really took place in this passage of Scripture, Alex. Amen? And we can all relate to it. I may not have been running around naked and people trying to subdue me. You know what I mean? But I was running around, Alex. Amen? And I was, I was sleeping in death. I was in the tomb. Amen? You guys ready? I don't know where I'm at. Somebody help me. 26, that's right. Then God said, let us make man in our, in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, and over all creation that moves along the ground. Amen? Let me tell you something. Everything God created was for us was for our good. And we were supposed to rule over it. You know what that's saying, brother? I'm going to just talk to you. Nobody else is here, okay? Wait, wait, wait. I'm talking to you, brother. He looked away. And that, that threw me way off. Okay, I'm going to talk to you, sister, and just let him hear, amen? Because you're, you're his better half anyways. We just found that out, amen? But <laughs> she's all, Amen. <laughs> I already forgot what I was saying now. All right, here we go. Oh, my gosh. Let me read it again. Maybe it'll come back to me. 26 is where I'm at. I only had the one verse. <laughs> then God said, Let us make man in our image, in, the, in our likeness, and let, let them rule. Oh, oh, there it is right there, brother. Here it is, okay? I mean, sister, here it is. Okay, sister? Look, here's what he's saying. He's saying that all the things you think you possess, right? If you chase after those things and you work hard to get them, right, and leave God out of it, then those things own you. That's the world the enemy created to keep you captive, right? So you stay in your sin. You understand? But if you do all those things in Christ, amen? then God gives you those things. They don't own you. You own them. You can either be owned by the world or you can own the world you live in. Amen? Because you were created to... You were created... It was created for you to control. Amen? Because you're a child of a great king who gave you those things. They don't need to rule over you. They don't need... You don't need to, to praise them. You don't need to chase after them. Amen? You have to work to support your family and stuff, but you go to work for the Lord. Amen? You do those things upon uh, for God, and God will give you those things. If you chase those things, you're going to leave God out of the equation. That's the, that's the world the enemy created, amen? We don't live in that world. We don't live in that world, sister, amen? I mean, brother, I mean, sister, I mean, sister, I mean, brother. All right. Okay, we're back to everyone else now. Whew. Here we go. We're in uh, Mark, right? All right. <laughs> you went around the tombs, blah, 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 chains. Are there, okay. Oh, man, isn't it cool? Don't we sing so many beautiful songs that my chains are gone? My chains are gone, amen? We no longer have those chains, right? Okay, four, it says, He had often been chained hand and foot 
but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he, w he would cry out and cut himself with stones. I was thinking about that, you guys. You know, we were... Um, I know people who have cut themselves. And I've asked them, why did you cut yourself? You know, why are you doing that? Right, Granny? We know people, right, Granny? And 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 they usually say that when they do that, it, it hurts, but it feels good. It takes away the inner pain. <clears throat> you know? and and But the reality of it is, is that that is not of God. It's not of God. It actually comes from the world. It comes from the enemy. And we're using something that God, we're putting that in place of the one who's supposed to deliver us from those things. So here this man is trapped in his body with all these demons and he's cutting himself to try to relieve himself of what's happening in him. And there's only one that can relieve you, amen? There's only one that can set you free. You get it? But you know what? There's a lot of us that are feeling that way. There's a lot of us where the world is just too strong and it's too overcoming. It really is. Sometimes, sometimes it's 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 beyond anything. Like I was telling them in Sunday school, um, we see an impossibility in the world of something coming against us, and it's only we see an impossibility because we're not trusting God. We we think to ourselves, how can God overcome that? How how can He make this right? How can it be fixed? You know, I had a guy, and um. Uh, nobody here knows him, so I'm going to go ahead and share the story a little bit. But but he had like four kids with four different women. Okay? And then he came to know the Lord. Right? Came to the Lord, so he started doing things right, right? He got a job. He started cleaning up his life. Next thing you know, he's getting hit with child support from four different women. They're taking his half his paycheck. His, his income taxes are going to be gone. All this stuff, right? Get it? And you know what he chose to do? He chose to throw it all away and go back to the world and start doing drugs and drinking again because nobody was after him then. See, in, in the world, we see those things sometimes and, and we're trying to see them in God, but, but we see an impossibility. We see an impossibility because we don't trust God. We're not trusting Him. You know what I told him? I pleaded with him. I begged him. I said, look, just keep doing the right thing. God's going to deliver you. He's going to give you away. He knows that you sinned. He knows that stuff you did wasn't right. Amen? But He's not going to call you to a new life and not help you. He's not going to call you to, to something real that He promises a better life. Amen? And He's not going to deliver you. <coughs> I told Him, stay faithful. But it was easier to go back to the world. Easier to go back to death. than to trust God. See that? We need to trust God. And we need to know that all things are possible in Him. All things are. All things are possible. Okay? You know what's sad is that, is that people don't trust Him and they fall back away, right? And then what happens is they, they, they actually, whether you like it or not, they lead others back in that direction. See? So not only are you falling, but so are people around you. Where was I? Five, six? Oh, we were talking about cutting yourself, blah, blah, blah. There's always another way, man. There's always another way. You just have to trust the Lord. When he saw Jesus, I like this part. He had no choice. Granny, you and I have a choice. Because we were created to be creators, to be we were created in His image to to have free will and to make choices, Amen. But this demon, who was created by the by death, had no choice. He had to submit. He didn't go there to worship God. He went there in fear of God. He got on his knees and trembled before God. Let me tell you something: things in the world that are coming against you, if you'll stand in Christ, they will tremble before Him. They have no power over you. That's the truth. 
We give them power. The enemy only has the power we give him. We were created in the image of God. Amen? And we've been set free in Christ. Haven't we? Do you believe it? Do you? See, because if there's doubt, that's the enemy. If there's doubt, it's the enemy. A Christian should live without doubt. Amen? A Christian should know the truth. You get it? When he, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. You and I, we need to get on our knees in front of him, but we make the choice to do it. He had no choice. He had no, You know what, brother? I was praying this morning. I was praying so hard this morning because there's people that I know that God wants to deliver. Amen? And I was praying so hard because I thought, Lord, I, I want to pray with them. I want to see you deliver them. Amen? And the enemy was placing doubt in me. Or you're not good enough to pray for that. Those people are possessed. They're going to come against you. You're this. You're that. You're not this. You're not that. You know, the enemy. We should live without doubt. And when we're called, we should go. Amen? Right? If we see somebody hurting and broken, and we know that they're enslaved, then we should go. If we're called, we should go. And we should do it without doubt, knowing they could be delivered. Amen? We were delivered, Francis. I have no idea how I was. I am telling you, only, only through the grace of God. Amen? And I say grace because grace um, caused me to fear, and grace took my fears away. Amen? Amen? That's a song, just so you know, Paul. Huh? I know, right? Doesn't it blow your mind? And yet we are. Right? And yet, and now, through the through the knowledge of who He is and what He's done, we have the wisdom to put His Word into to life through activating it, by, 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 by trusting it, by believing in it, by living in it. Amen? Isn't it beautiful? So now we know that we know that we know who we are. Man. <coughs> Six? Oh, I mean, somebody brought me water. Give me a second. Amen. I love this part. When you start to activate the power of God, the world will scream. They, I'm telling you, the world will scream. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell at his knees in front of him. And uh, he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? Amen. Jesus, Son of the Most High. Let me explain something to you. This is very powerful, and this scripture really, really needs to be explained. It's not something you just read past. Okay? The enemy is doing in us everything he can to humiliate God. We were created by God and for God in the image of God. And when he can tear you down, he's tearing down God. He's tearing down the Creator. And He acknowledged who Jesus was. And the enemy should acknowledge who you are. Amen? You get it? Alex, you are the child of the Most High God. And you were created in His image to be holy, to be righteous. Amen? We serve a God of, of, of spirit and truth and of righteousness. And He wants us to serve Him in spirit and truth and in His righteousness. Amen? You were created for that very purpose. And the enemy did everything in his power to destroy that. And he's still trying to destroy that around us. You get it? And he acknowledged who he was. Paul, when you go out in the boldness of Christ, the enemy has to acknowledge who you are. Amen? 
Watch what it says. We give them a choice to receive or deny Christ every time we're in their presence. Amen? You guys ready? He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't tor uh, torture me. <laughs> One time when we were out, this is years ago, Memo's here, so I want to share it because he was there. But we were out just knocking on doors, you know? And we were in this bad trailer park. Granny, it was the worst, worse than the one you lived on, on Wittrum. Way worse. It was bad. We were actually scared, actually, to be honest with you. And we were praying after each door going around this trailer park because we knew that there was, like, drug addicts, drunkards, gangbangers, probably child molesters. I mean, all kinds of stuff were in that park, huh, Memo? And I was actually scared. I had Katie Foster and, and uh, Chantel with us, and there was women, you know? And I was like watching them like I was like like a hawk, you know what I mean? And they were willing, they're just going door. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> you know? And this one man starts to ha harass the women. And I ran up between the women and the man, and he's asking, who sent you? And he was getting kind of violent. He was starting to get violent, huh, Memo? Who sent you? Who's, and he, I believe he was possessed. Let me tell you why. I'm going to share this with you to blow your mind. True story. And I said, I, I'm here in the name of Jesus Christ. And I reached out and took his hand. He didn't, he didn't offer it. I took it. And the man went to his knees. Started crying. We picked him up and we took him back to the church. And he gave his life to Christ. Amen. I took him home to his dad's house that day. And I found out a couple things. His wife was cheating on him with her drug dealer. And he was at that trailer to get his brother's gun to kill them. And even then, I didn't believe it. No way, Lord. I took him home to meet his dad. And his dad told me he just got out after doing 22 years for doing just that. He went to jail for a little while. And when he got out, his wife was dancing in a strip club. And he went in there and shot the place up. He had 22 years for it. Six months later, his dad put him in a program. We're having a food line. Memo used to run the food bank, and he's in the line. He's yelling, Pastor Matt, Pastor Matt. He's all happy. His life is different. Amen? Amen? Let me tell you guys something. The enemy submits when you walk in the power of God. Amen? The enemy submits. You guys ready? I don't know where I'm at. Help me out, Paul. Oh, okay, right here. Swear to God that you won't torment, torture me. For Jesus had said, come out of this man, you evil spirit. Amen? Isn't that beautiful? You guys, I'm telling you that every single human being that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior knows about Him and they all want to be delivered. You don't have the power to deliver them, but you can walk in the power that does. Amen? They still have to make a free will choice because like I said, God can't command us. He does command us and we need to submit. You understand? Let's turn the page. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? You know, if we were honest when we got saved, I'll never forget this, Francis. It's so funny. I shared it a couple times, but I knew the sinner that I was. And God's word had been convicting my heart over and over and over again. And I kept holding it at bay and holding it at bay, but he kept showing me things. And let me tell you, there wasn't one thing, Matthew V. There was thousands of things that were wrong in my life. You know? And he kept showing them to me and showing them to me. But you know, I was young, you know, and indestructible. I could do whatever I want. You know what I mean? I was that kind of person, you know? I still am in some... No, just kidding. Stop it. So, but you know what happened? You know what really happened? Is that the day I decided to give my life to Christ, and I knew it. It was funny. I was going around telling people, I'm going to give my life to Christ today. And I hadn't done it yet, Granny, but I knew it. It was like I was inspired, but it hadn't happened. Wouldn't it have been terrible to die in that, in that place before I had a chance? I should have done it immediately, right? 
But I just felt like it had to be the altar call, you know. And so I'm going around telling people that day, and I'm getting more and more excited and more and more, you know. But it was the funniest thing, Paul. When it came time, I didn't want to get out of my seat. It was like somebody nailed me down to the seat, you know. It was so heavy. And I got up, and as I began to walk forward, I started to feel the weight of all those things that God was sharing with me. You know, when you're in the presence of God, you kneel before Him when you're not when you don't know Him. And the demon, the demons kneel before Him. They had no choice. And as I got closer to the altar, the, the weight became so heavy. I told some of you it was like a, you ever see a pallet of bricks? It felt like I had a pallet of bricks on my back. I had no choice but to bow down. I'm telling you, I didn't go up to the pastor or anybody. I just walked right past him. I was like, Ugh. I went right to my knees. And I accepted my Lord and Savior, amen? And in that moment, all that stuff was lifted. I was free from it. I know what this man that had the legion in him felt like. I know what he felt like. Didn't you know what he felt like? I felt it. I know. All that was delivered from me. Man, when I got up from the altar, you guys, I, I promise you, I know it's impossible. I, I'm going to tell you an impossibility and it happened, okay, Rose? I know it's impossible, Rose. My feet never touched the ground leaving the building. Man, after he lifted all that off of me, I was as white as a, uh, as light as a feather. I mean, I just, I walked out of the building never touching the ground. It's the most beautiful feeling. You know, Francis, every day, there's things the enemy's trying to do and the world's doing around us that we participate in. And if we let it, we'll, those bricks will just get piled on us again until we're so heavy, you know? The only difference is now in Christ, we feel the weight. He wants us to be delivered every day if we have to. We need to give it back to Him every day. We need to go to our knees every day. We need to make a choice to, to give that to Him, amen? And to get up new every day, there's new mercies in God. Right? The worst sin for a Christian isn't the things the world that he's doing in the world. The worst sin for a Christian is not getting up. Not giving those things to God and trying again a new day. Amen? Because you just pile those things back on. We're already saved. We've been delivered. I have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's finish this up. Where am I? My name is Legion, he replied. My name is Legion, for we are many. And I had so many, you guys. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out into the area, not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. Man, I love this part. But, you know, I was thinking about what, uh, uh, again about who Jesus is and what he did to deliver us. He set us free. He cast those things out. Amen? And he used something that was unclean. Right? Let the dead bury the dead. Amen? And he was in a region of, 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 of Gentiles too. You know what I mean? And he was showing them something. Watch what it says. My name is Legion. Okay, we're at 11. A large herd of pigs was feeding on a nearby hillside. The demon begged Jesus, send us among the pigs. Don't you love this part? Um, allow us to go into them. Listen to this. You guys ready? He gave them permission. God, I love that. You know why I love that, Rose? Because Jesus has power and authority over everything. You think things aren't possible? In Christ, everything is possible because He has power and authority over everything. He gave them permission. Go. He didn't have to. He could have told them to go somewhere else. He could have cast them into the abyss. But He had a power and authority over it. And He told them, go. It's sad that He doesn't have power and authority over us, Alex. Because if He did, life would be easier. Amen? Or it would be worse. I don't know. <laughs> right? But we have to make that choice to give Him. We have to make the choice to make Him Lord. Amen? It's easy to make Him a Savior because we all want to be saved. But it's harder to submit, isn't it? 
When you call somebody your Lord, then you're submitting to that person. Yeah, right? That's where I'm at. Make me Lord because I just can't do it on my own. <laughs> right? I'm sorry, but I just, come on. You know, to, to answer to that, you know what, Granny, is funny? Is um, uh, there's things I've been caught in and I couldn't get out of. I felt like there was no way out, you know? But every day I would, I would make the promise to give that to God. And that's what I was telling you about not getting up is the wrong thing. You know what I mean? So every day I would give that to God and then go do it. And I'd say, God, I don't want to do that anymore. Why am I still doing it? Take this from me. I don't know, you know? And every day I would make that same prayer and I'd start off again and I would try real hard and then I would do it. You know? But I never gave up. And then one day I thought to myself, when did I stop doing that? Amen? Right? Because God wants to deliver us. And His Word is alive and active. Amen? And I started to put it into practice. And through that practice, He delivered me. Isn't that beautiful? You guys ready? He gave them permission. And the evil spirit came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number. Can you imagine the sacrifice that was made for this man? I want to share that with you because it's true, okay? In today's society, none of us want to sacrifice anything for anybody. It's all about us. Okay? I don't know what 2,000 pigs are worth. But there was people watching those pigs that had a job that was taken away. Whoever owned them, the food supply, all of that. And you know what? God considered it nothing. Considered it nothing so that He could set us free. So don't look at the world and what you might be giving up. Okay? You look at the possibility that God has for your life and for the lives of those you're willing to sacrifice. Amen? It ain't mine anyways. It's not. It all belongs to Him. If I have something, it's just a resource that God gives me to help others. Amen? Are you ready? He gave him permission. God, I can't get past that verse. Thank you, Jesus. He gave him permission. You know what? We ought to walk around with that kind of authority. I give you permission. Get out of him. Go over there, little pigs, and go in the ocean and kill yourself. Amen? Hey, death begets death. Begets death. And life begets life begets life. You ready? He gave it. Oh, I'm already down there. Okay. Da, da, da. And they ran down the hill and they drowned. Let's see here. 2,000 in number rushed down the steep uh, bank into the lake and were drowned. Amen. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this to the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. Amen. You know, when I got saved, uh, I had family members go do that. It ran all through the family and friends that Matt's not the person he used to be. Matt got saved. And some of them came out to see. You know, they couldn't believe it. They actually wanted to pull me back into the world, do everything in their power. They didn't want to lose me. Right? I had a cousin. She was crazy. We used to drink together and hang out and run the streets and stuff. And she was all mad. I want Matt back. She did all kinds of things, whole lies, did all kinds of stuff to try to, to, to tear me down, you know, and to get me back into the world. And, you know, and, 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 you know some of it worked to be honest with you. But I kept giving that to the Lord. Amen? Kept giving it to the Lord. I saw that cousin not too long ago, right here on the streets of San Bernardino, and she's still living the same way she always was. And I begged her to come to church with us. I told her where we were. I told her we'd pick her up. I begged her. You know? And if I see her again, I'm going to beg her again. Amen? I'm going to keep begging her. Wouldn't it be amazing to see her deliver and be here with us in the church, growing in the Lord? And we have that power and authority to live a certain way so that they know that they can have something better. Amen? You ready? So they ran they told everyone, okay, they went, uh, they, uh, when they came to Jesus, 
They saw the man who had been possessed by the by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his in his right mind and they and they and they were afraid amen that that just it goes on that they plead with him to leave you know and it just really gets me you know because they should have been can you imagine they've been dealing with this guy they've been trying to chain him they've been trying to do all this stuff you know probably saw themselves in him in a lot of ways too right and here he is delivered can you imagine the peace that he displayed? Just his, his aura about him, sitting with Jesus free. Right? Right? You get it? You just see the wonderfulness of it? And these men weren't even thinking about that. And I would have just been like, who's this Jesus? You know, I would have submitted myself to his, to, I don't know, maybe I wouldn't have, Granny. Maybe not in that state. Maybe it took the guy going and telling everyone, you know? Right? I don't know. But I just think it was the wrong, the wrong thing, right? We get like that sometimes, even in the church. I've told you guys before, and I hate this saying, Kathy. Are you ready? Oh, they're a baby Christian. It'll wear off, right? Because when people first get saved, they're on fire, and they're telling everybody about Jesus, and they're going to Bible studies, and they're doing this, they're doing that. And then the, the older Christians who've been in the church a long time are like almost bothered by it. <clears throat> oh, it'll wear off. You know what? Don't ever let it wear off. I'll never be bothered by it. And if somebody's bothered by it, we'll win them to the Lord too. Amen? Right? Kathy? Amen? Wow, I got an amen. Here we go. 18? Am I in 18? Okay. As Jesus went, as Jesus was getting into the boat, so he's, 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 oh no, I didn't read the part where they asked him to leave, right? Then, then the people be, uh, began to plead with Jesus, leave their region. Can you imagine the sin that was in that place that they would beg, plead with? Huh? The king of kings, the one who gives life. Alex, they could not be in his presence. Alex, Alex, okay? You're a man of the spirit. Amen. I'm not giving him any kudos. He just really is, okay? When you feel the power of the Spirit, right, in your life, in that moment, the Bible says it's a, it's a, it's a um, deposit of that which will always be in heaven. So in those moments, we're, we're in the very presence of God. Amen? And in those moments where the light comes on, we see the truth. He fills us with all kinds of knowledge. And, and if we accept it, He fills us with the wisdom that comes from that knowledge. Amen? And our whole life begins to change because of His presence, right? Jesus was God in their presence. Alex, they felt that. They felt what I'm asking you that you feel when the Holy Spirit's in your, in present in your life, amen? Right? It, being in the presence of Jesus Christ was being in the presence of God. You know what happens in the presence of God? All things are revealed. All things come to light. Heaven and earth become one. Amen, like the song says. You see? And everywhere Jesus walked, they felt that presence. Everywhere He walked, they saw their sin. Everywhere He walked, they, they saw the truth. Everywhere He walked, they saw the light. Or the, the, the light. Amen? Saw the truth, the life, and the what? The way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, that's what I was looking for. Everywhere he walked, they saw the way. They saw the truth. They saw the life. Because they were in the presence of God. And these people pleaded that presence out of their life. Imagine the light must have been on that darkness. And they wanted him out of there. Remember I was telling you about my cousin and others? That ended up happening when I chose to stay in Christ. They wanted out of there. Amen? But that light that was shining... Cause them to make a choice to receive or deny. Amen? And now when there's a problem in the family, I'm the first one called. Why? Why is that? Amen? Because we, yeah, because we set an example for the world of who Christ is and what they can have in Him. Amen? <clears throat> As 
as Jesus was getting in the boat after they pleaded with him to, to leave their presence. Can you imagine? There was only one that still wanted him to be there. That he, he wanted to go everywhere Jesus was. He wanted to be with him. Amen? Look what it says. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. And Jesus did not let him, but said, and this is funny because when he was in Jerusalem or, or in the areas around the Jewish people, he never told people this. He told them to be quiet, not to tell people who he was. That his time had not yet come. But because he was amongst the Gentiles, see, they were free to share. You're free to share, you guys. Amen? You ready? Jesus did not let him, but he said, Go home to your family and tell them, how much the Lord has done for you. I've had people tell me repeatedly, I don't know how to share the gospel. I don't know how to share Christ with people. Jesus made it really simple here, okay? And I've been saying it for years. All you have to do is share your life in Christ with them. Share who you are now. Share what God has done for you, amen? And you know what? Jesus probably wouldn't have been able to be heard in that area because of the darkness and them pleading with him to leave, right? But this man could be heard. This man could shed light. This man that's been delivered knows the truth, knows what God had done for him, and he could share that with those people. That's all Jesus is asking us, is to share our new life and everything he's done for us with the people around us. Amen? Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he, has, uh, how he had mercy on you. Amen? Imagine the mercy he's talking about isn't punishment or like, uh, to, to not bring punishment upon somebody, but to, to deliver them from that. Wow. Isn't that so much better? Isn't that so beautiful? So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis, which is everywhere in the region of the, of the Gentiles back then, in the known world back then, okay? He said, uh, how much Jesus had done for you, and all the people were amazed which means that one man, I think of another man when I think about this, but that one man touched the lives of thousands probably, right? Your life should touch the lives of thousands. See? But that I was thinking about, remember the um, Philip was put on the road and the, the eunuch came by and he was reading um, Isaiah and he, sa he said, do you know what you're reading? He said, no, I don't. And so Philip was um, invited up on the, the chariot with him, and he began to share the gospel message with him. Do you know who it is you're reading about? Let me tell you what Jesus has done. Amen? And, and you know what was funny, Granny, in that scripture, in Acts, is that where Philip was, he was delivering all kinds of people who were coming to know Jesus. Hundreds of them. And, and the Holy Spirit took him from that and put him with one person. Why would he do that? Because that one person was going to go to a place that others never had been before and spread the gospel. Amen? And that's the way God wants to use our lives. So the whole message today leads up to one thing. Amen? You know who God is. It's time to live for Him so that others can have life. Amen? We've been delivered, Alex. They need to be delivered. Amen. Father, I just want to come to you, Lord, just thanking you for today. Thank you for your word, Lord. What an amazing God you are. And uh, Lord, I want to pray for those that weren't here today. I was thinking about a few, Father. and The few I was thinking about, Lord.